Hello YouTubers, Flyer556 five, five, here. Back again on another cold winter day here in New Jersey. The last day of January 2015. It's too cold outside to do any shooting or anything else, so I figured it's a good day to do a gun review. So that's what we're going to do here today. On a Ruger SP-101 22 revolver. I had this gun about four or five months now. I shot it four or five times, cleaned it four or five times, so on and so on. So I feel it's time. It's a good day for this. Too cold for anything else, so here we go. This is the gun we're going to be talking about today. Ruger SP-101 22. The gun's already been safety checked as always. First thing I do when it comes out of the safety, safety checking. So it's already been done, but I'll show you. Just so you see, it's completely empty. Okay? Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, give you a quick look at both sides of it. Check it out. Okay. This is an eight shot revolver. It's a single and double action. Can be fired either way. It's a satin stainless steel finish. It's all stainless steel. Um, the grip is a rubber grip. Really nice grip. Ruger did good on this one. It's a rubber grip with a walnut inlay. It's got the Ruger symbol on it. Beautiful checkering on the walnut really nice on this side it's got this indentation here for a right hand shooter which I am this is perfect because your thumbs kind of fall right into that it's really nice feel to that outstanding job on the grips there Ruger uh, it's a 4.2 inch barrel the gun weighs 30 ounces most people consider this a full-size revolver. Um, to me, it's not really a full-size revolver because I shoot rather large caliber guns. As you all know, I got a couple of 357s, a couple of 44s, and um, to me, it doesn't feel all that full-size, but I guess if you compared it maybe to a 38 Special or something to that caliber I guess it could be considered a full-size gun because it is 30 ounces and it is it is about the size of a standard 38 like a like a model 10 or a model 15 Smith it's about the size of that it's a 1 in 16 right hand twist um, the barrel's got a partial underlug which I, I like that look I'm really not crazy about the full underlug so that's cool um, the cylinder it's a three lockup system, like most Ruger revolvers have. It locks up in the front, the rear, and the bottom as you depress the trigger. So it, it's pretty much guaranteed to line up cylinder to barrel, dead center every time. That's a good feature. It is, it is rather heavy duty, um, you know, for a 22. It's a, it's a really heavy barrel, as you can see there. It's a good target barrel. Um, sights, the rear sight, it's a notch. It's fully adjustable, as you can see there, for elevation and windage. Okay. Front sight, it's a fiber optic green sight. It's a really nice um, jump out and get you type sight, as you can see here. The other thing I like about it is not only is it fiber optic, where the, where the sight goes around the fiber optic insert, it's square. So the square lines up perfect with the square notch in the rear. It's a real nice line up there. I'll see if I can get a sight picture here, if I can get one for you so you can see how that looks. I guess that's decent. It's kind of what you see. It's kind of hard for me to see on the camera, but it is a square, um, square notch that lines up pretty good with that okay so it gives you a pretty decent sight picture overall 
Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? That pretty much covers the gun, I guess. It's got the Ruger cylinder release, which is a push button style. You press this, this button in here, the cylinder comes out. Okay. Closes like any other revolver. It does rotate counterclockwise, like the Smith. Okay. That's the way it rotates. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? Well, we can talk a little bit about accuracy. I could make a whole other video on that, but I'll briefly go into it. I wasn't real, real impressed with the accuracy on this thing. Um, so I did some research after it got cold out, and the shooting season kind of ended. And I came to the conclusion, I do a lot of reloading, I do a lot of bullet casting, and based on my knowledge with that, I came to the conclusion the 22 really is no different than any other gun. The, the bullets really need to be fitted to the gun, so I did a little bit of research on what I was shooting at the time. And like I said, I really wasn't impressed with the accuracy, but I did only shoot one type of ammunition through it. What I was shooting was some old Winchester 40 grain hollow point ammo that I had for a long time that I kind of wanted to use up first. So that's what I chose to shoot. And um, for what I saw, the groups were rather large. But anyhow, the research I did consisted of the same thing I would do if I had this problem with any other gun. Trying to see if the bullet was fitted to the gun. And I came to the conclusion, I'll break it down for you simply here. I got a small chart here of what I did. Like I said, I was shooting Winchester Super X hollow point 40 grain. And what I did is I slugged the barrel and I came up with the lands being 217 thousandths and the grooves being 221 thousandths. Now, the only thing that's important with that really is the grooves, the 221 thousandths of an inch. That's what they are on this particular gun. And the cylinder throats, I measured all them. They're also 221 thousandths, exactly. I measured all eight of them. I measured the bullet that I slugged the barrel with and I came up with 221 for cylinder throat and groove diameter. Now, I measured a few types of 22 LR ammo, and this is what I came up with. The Winchester Super X came up 222.5. I measured five of each of these. So, that was one and a half thousandths bigger, which you would assume would be good, because you're generally looking for one to two thousandths larger than groove diameter. But, um, I measured some other stuff that I had, and... Winchester 36 grain hollow point, which I haven't tried yet, was a thousandths larger. CCI 40 grain, standard, you know, mini mags, was 223.5, the same thing, a thousandths bigger. Winchester Wildcat 40 grain, I measured them, same, well, close to the same, 223 diameter, 0.5 of a thousandths bigger. And I had some Remington Viper lead hollow point. They were 224.5. They were the largest out of everything. I didn't shoot any of those other ones, but I think that's going to drastically improve the accuracy when I try them. I'll find out when it, when it gets warmer out and I resume shooting again. Um, but that was my findings. And just to let you guys know, as, as it is hard to find 22 nowadays, that's the reason I bought a revolver. I bought the revolver because, um, let me see if I can pick this up without dropping it to show you. I didn't buy a semi-auto because you're limited to only being able to shoot 22 long rifle in a 22 long rifle semi-auto. So by buying a revolver, you can shoot anything you want in one of them. So this, this here, this first one, is what I was shooting the, day, the days that I shot it. This is a 40 grain Winchester Super X hollow point and that has that um, 222.5 diameter. All these other ones are larger. This is a 22 CB long. This is a subsonic round 
which can be shot in this because it's a revolver. These are two types of bird shot, which also can be shot in this because you don't have to worry about the feeding issue. It's a revolver, it's in a cylinder, and you can pretty much load anything you want. This is a 22 short, which if you had an auto loader, you'd be out of luck with these. You wouldn't be able to use these unless you use one at a time, and they'd never be enough to cycle the action. Whereas with this, they're fine. This is just a 22 cap. I haven't seen these in 20 years or so. I pretty much just keep a couple of them around that I got left from years ago for display purposes only. Um, you'd even be fine shooting these in this thing. Because in a revolver, it doesn't matter. You could shoot any of these. That's why I went with a revolver. Now, one more thing about the revolvers. I had a tough choice between this and the Smith 617. I, w I really, really wanted to buy the Smith 617. It's a 10 shot revolver. I'm not sure the barrel length It's much longer than this. Um, it's more money than this. I paid around 600 for this. I think the Smith is around eight. It's at least seven. And I really had my mind set on buying the Smith. But I watched a lot of reviews on YouTube. And I don't know if you saw my review on the Smith & Wesson Model 586 I did last week. Um, it has that new key lock on the side of the cylinder, like right here above the release. And the 617 also has that key lock for the cylinder and hammer lockout. On the larger caliber guns, I haven't heard any problems with it from Smith at all. But on the 617 in specific, I've heard a lot of people had a lot of problems. And I learned this on YouTube, and I'm glad I did the research and found out about it before I bought the gun. Because I found out that a lot of people have a lot of problems with it. They say they fire two or three rounds or at least every cylinder, they say, within every 10 shots, they have a problem. Where the gun locks up, you can't pull the hammer back, you can't pull the trigger, you can't open the cylinder, and they say it's pretty much all because of that, 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 that key lock. They say it's presenting a lot of problems with the 617. So with that said, and by learning that, I, I decided to go with this. I did research on this before I bought it. I haven't found anybody to have any problems with this thing. As far as um, reliability or everybody says it's accurate, I really think the reason I wasn't so impressed with the accuracy was because of um, the ammo that I was using. I'll find out about that. I might do a chapter two on this after I run some different types of ammo through it and update what I'm saying today. But I just wanted to get something up there and show you guys the gun and let you know I'm, I'm really happy with it. I got no complaints. I mean, the accuracy, I really believe that was the ammo that I was shooting that particular day or the days that I shot it, because that's really all I shot. And um, I think bringing it up a thousandths or a thousandths and a half, which everything else seems to be aside from what I was shooting, I think that'll resolve my accuracy issue. Um, so pretty much that's that. Um, for any of you guys that don't know how to check this, it's really pretty easy to check. If you're having these problems or you want to check and get more accuracy out of your revolver or any gun for that matter, pretty much take, if you're looking at a revolver, take your gun, take one of these. If you're a reloader, you got to have one of these. Take one of these, turn it on, simply roll it open, drop it in your cylinder throat and pull it open. And whatever comes out on that, write it down. Measure all of them six, eight, ten, whatever you have. Measure them all, write them all down, compare them. They should all be the same. If not, they should be very close within 0.5 of a thousandths. Write that measurement down, get an overall estimate of what the measurement is, document that, and then take a bullet, of course the caliber for that gun, a soft lead bullet, start it in the bore backwards this way, as if it was going in, not out. Tap it in with a rubber mallet and then take a wooden dowel and tap it through the bore so it comes out here, right out the forcing cone. Let it drop out and then take this and measure it. You want to measure the fattest part of that. That's the groove diameter. You're going to come up with two measurements. You're going to have a small one and a large one. The small one is going to be your lens. 
You don't want that measurement. You want the groove. You want the larger of the two. As you bring this around the, the bullet, once it's got the grooves in it, when you ram it through the barrel, you'll see it'll go large, small, large, small, large, small. You want the larger of the two. That's the groove diameter. Most likely your groove diameter will match the throat diameter. This here is the throat diameter, the front of the cylinder. Once you got those two measurements, you'll know what your diameter is. You're looking for a bullet one to two thousandths larger than that for the most accuracy possible. Okay. Um, uh, oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to talk about. Ruger gives you this box with the gun. This, like I say, I tell it like it is. This box sucks. It's a piece of garbage. Well, you're paying for the gun. You're paying for the gun. You're not paying for this. I just want to show you this because I'm going to show you something you can buy to replace this that's cheap and easily replaced. This box, first of all, these latches suck because there's no hinge here. There's no hinge here. It just kind of folds. And over time, this is going to snap off and break. Okay? Same thing with the way it opens. There's no hinge on the back. This kind of just folds and bends this. So over time, this here is going to break. Okay? As far as the inside of the box, what you get, this is the box that this gun comes in. Okay? This box apparently is the box that they ship everything they make in for a handgun revolver anyway. Because as you can see, this thing does not fit in this box. This box is designed for a much larger gun like a 44 or a 357 so I think the box completely sucks Ruger you didn't do so good on the box in addition to it not having a hinge here not having a hinge on either of the latches not fitting the gun properly it doesn't have a key lock here either I mean a lock where you can put a padlock and lock the box so when you're transporting it if you live in a state like New Jersey like I live in you have to have a locking box it doesn't offer that either you could drill a hole in it but why should you have to do that I just want to show you guys this for a reason because there's an easy fix for this you can go to Dick's Sporting Goods they're pretty much everywhere in the USA and you can buy one of these boxes they're less than $13 you get a hinge in the back Okay, the latches on the front of this box, they're hinged. They got hinges. You can open and close this a thousand times and you'll never wear it out. Not gonna hurt it, okay? Opening and closing on the back, it's a hinge, nothing bends. It's a hinge like a door. It's a pretty good quality box for under $13, okay? I think I got four of these. You get nice padding inside. You don't get that with the Ruger box. This is the way it comes. For under $13 at Dick's, you can buy this. Good, positive locking latches, nice hinges on the back and, and the latches, and you got your lock right here. You can put a padlock so you can lock the box while you're transporting, or for any other reason that you might want to lock it. It's completely lockable. It's somewhat durable. It's not, I'm not going to say it's the most durable box, but it's pretty durable. And it does got nice foam padding inside on both sides. You can put your paperwork underneath that lifts out. Okay. All in all, I like these boxes and they're less than 13 bucks a stick. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Because this is a complete piece of junk. Okay, now that we got that out of the way. Um, show you a couple kinds of ammo. I wasn't going to drag out tons of ammo. Here's two different kinds of ammo. CCI, 22 long and 22 short. The difference, in case any of you don't know, the pretty substantial difference there. If you got a semi-auto that says 22 LR, pretty much the only thing you can shoot in it is 22 LR. Whereas a revolver, you can shoot either one of these. And as hard as it is to get 22 today, that's one of the main reasons I went with the revolver, because you can shoot anything you can get your hands on in it, okay? There was one other reason why I bought this gun. 
By owning one of these, this is the first 22 handgun I, I, I own. I own a lot of rifles, but this is the only handgun I have. And I made this choice for two reasons. One, you could shoot any kind of ammo, as I mentioned more than once. And two, I do a lot of reloading, bullet casting, so on and so on. So by having a 22 revolver or an auto pistol, it wouldn't really matter for this purpose, but I bought it for the simple reason. This gun gives me a reason to hang out in the handgun range shoot five or ten bucks worth of ammo and anybody that doesn't collect their brass I can pick up a lot of brass on the range with a small investment of five or ten bucks worth of shooting this gives me a reason to be in the range to get brass to get a lot of brass for my other guns for free that people a lot of people don't save it but if you don't have a reason to be in there you're gonna check it get what you can get and pretty much go home this gives me a reason even if I'm shooting rifle or whatever I get done I can take this out, take five or ten bucks worth of ammo in the handgun range, spend a couple hours in there, and come home with a whole bunch of brass that I can polish and then reload for my other guns. That's the other purpose of why I wanted this. So that pretty much sums up my review. No complaints. It's a good, solid, heavy-duty gun. Really nice grips on it. I really like the grips. The cylinder lockup. Um, really nice three-way lockup guaranteed centering on it fit and finish I think it's uh, I think the fit and finish is right up there with the Smith honestly I really would have liked to buy the Smith but I didn't buy it because there's, there's just you can do your own research look on YouTube you'll see for yourself a lot of people are having problems with that key lock on the 617 and that's why I didn't buy it that's why I bought this there's one more thing I wanted to show you the cylinder on this, try and get it where you can see it, is recessed. See where the, where the cartridges go in? Like if I drop one in, if I take this 22 long rifle and drop it in, it's flush. Right to the cylinder, flush. Okay? Doesn't stick out like that. It's recessed. Like the old Smiths that were made back in the 70s. All the cylinders are recessed on this. I thought that was pretty cool. It's not why I bought it, but I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, I just wanted to mention that. The cylinders are recessed, which is a nice feature. That had to cost them some money to do that extra machining. So there it is. Ruger SP-101-22. That's my review. Subscribe, like, and thanks for your attention.